after the person just lectured? No, just one lecture. And we're going to start the lab one uh, next week. All right, cool. Uh, I think we can start now. So good, off, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so as I told you, we're going to start with the first lab after we finish chapter one. I should finish chapter one by next week. So the first lab will be on uh, in next week, OK? So I'm going to, uh, uh, during the weekend, I'm going to I'm gonna email you, I'm gonna post the lab. Uh, also, I'm gonna post the chapter two, and I'm gonna email you, okay? So, um, so last time, guys, I told you any computer system should have this architecture. It should have microprocessor or processor. So microprocessor, okay? Also, it should have a number of in, input and the output devices. So for example, this is input device number one. So we have several of them, okay? Input device number two, input device number three, and so on. And we have output device number one, output device number two. And also we have here memory, okay? Memory. And to connect the whole system to visa, we have buses. So we have here bus, okay, data bus. So the, as I told you, the data bus is just wires. It is just a shared, shared wires. So this bus, uh, so microprocessor can access the bus. Also, input device can write to the data bus, okay? Every input can write. Output device can read from the shared bus, okay? Memory can read or write from this bus, from data bus. And this is how microprocessor can send the data to output device. And this is how it can read from, from input device. So if one, one input device wanna send the data to the microprocessor, what should happen is that this input device has to write the data on the bus. For example, whatever the data is, for example, 3A, okay? And then microprocessor is get, reads it from the bus, okay? Uh, same thing, if the microprocessor want to write some data to output device, so microprocessor has to write it on the bus. And one output device should read it from the bus. That's why I call it shared bus. By common sense, two devices cannot write at the same time. So there should be some kind of coordination. Okay. Uh, also, also, when I, when I put some data here, for example, when I put data 3A, I I have to tell which device, which device has to take this data. Make sense? Also, if I want to read data, I have to tell where you want to read this data. I can read data from this input device. Can, I can read from this one. I can read from this one. I can read also from memory. And I told you for memory, we have too many locations in memory. You got what I'm saying? So even if you want to read from memory, you have to tell me which location you want to read, right? That's what I explained last time, and I, I told you it's called address. So every location in the memory has a unique address. If you want to read this location, or if you want to write this location, you have to use this address. Same thing for input-output devices. Every input or output device has a unique address. Is that okay? That is why we also here have another pass we have another bus here, we call it address bus. And this address bus is connected to everybody. Okay. For example, assume the address of input one, just any number 20, and this one 21, 22, for example. Okay. So if I want to read from the device number 21 or address the device that its address is 21, all what I have to do is I have to write here on the bus 21. That means the operation is gonna done right now, either reading or writing is gonna be for 21. So so that the other devices are not gonna are not gonna act. So they are not gonna read or write, right? So only 21 will do it. Same thing for memory, okay? But for memory, we have too many locations. Memory, we have too many locations. So you have to tell me what is exactly which address you want to read or which address you, you want to write. Is, is, that, is that okay? So all the time, all the time, microprocessor is sending data to the memory or, or output device or reading data. That's how it is all the time. 
read write read write read write okay um also as i explained last time for memory memory is just a location in the memory every location is storing only one byte this is standard standard every location storing is stores only one byte every location has an address number here address whatever it is for example 1000 or 100 101 whatever okay so uh, uh, so this is like address or location number and you store here one one byte in this location and that's what you are going to see in that one so in lab one, you are going to see the memory, you are going to see the locations or the addresses. I shouldn't say location anymore. So I just, I want you to understand memory looks like we have locations, okay? So I, I'm going to say addresses, okay? So we have for every uh, byte, we have one address for this part. You can read it or write it, okay? Um, also, I make it very clear last time. Why, why in this system, we, we need memory? Why you have memory? Okay, simply we need memory because number one, your program, your program is just a bunch of ones and zeros. So after you write your programming assembly, as I said last time, your program should be just a bunch of ones and zeros. So these ones and zeros have to be stored, they should be stored in memory because the processor, the processor does not have a storage here, it does, it's not, it does not store the program, so this program should be stored in memory. Is that okay? And and as I also as I tried to explain it last time, um, <coughs> I told you microprocessor. The processor is doing only one thing: execute instructions. That's it. So what, what uh, so what happens is, as you will see today. Uh, I told you the program is stored in memory, okay? What happens is that I have to read one instruction, instruction by instruction. So I have to read the machine code for each instruction, okay? So, uh, so after I read it, so I'm gonna execute, execute this instruction. Once I am done, I'm gonna go to the memory to give me the next instruction and so on. That's how all the time, okay? So all the time I'm gonna tell the memory, give me one instruction, execute it. Once I'm done, I'm gonna go to the memory, give me next one and so on, okay? Also, I told you we need a memory because in memory also we need to store in addition to the program, we also store data, data. Uh, as you know from any programming language, uh, for in any program, we need arrays, we need variables, okay? So this is what we call data. So when you store your variables, your arrays also in memory, that's why we need memory here uh, in the system, okay? Um, Also, I explained last time, guys. Okay, so you are telling us every location in memory is storing one byte. That's okay. But sometimes, not sometimes, most of the time, my, my variable is more than one byte. For example, if my variable half a word, half word, as I said last time, half a word means 16, 16 bits or two bytes. So these two bytes is your variable. It's one, it's one number, okay? Your, your variable is stored in, in two, 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 two bytes. So if this if this variable is stored in memory, how how I can store it? You got what I'm saying? Given that every location is only one byte, very simple. I told you it's gonna be it's gonna be stored in two locations. Okay. For example, if I have my variable, it's, it's, it has has the value uh, zero x. I told you before that mean, means hexadecimal three a f two. Okay. So this is this is the value stored in uh, of your variable. So this one is gonna be stored in two locations in memory, F2 and the 3A. So it's gonna take two locations. Same thing, if your variable is, is more than, um, if, if it is uh, 32 bits, so it's gonna be stored in full location. And that's what you are, I want you to see in the coming lab. So in the coming lab, you will see your variable is uh, uh, four bytes and they are stored in four locations in memory, okay? Uh, and the, very important, you should understand these two, these two values or these two location, it's one, one value. You understand what I'm saying? That's why every time I read, I have to read, I have to read all of them. 
when I write, I have to write all of them because these two together, yes, they are stored in two locations, two, two different locations, but the meaning of it, these two are together, this one value, you can understand one number, one variable. Okay? Um, also, last time I explained this very small ALE, ALU, arithmetic logic unit. I told you any processor should have what we call arithmetic logic unit, registers. I didn't talk about registers yet, and control unit. Also, I just, I, this is just a very toy example. I, I, I want you to understand uh, what's happening here is exactly the same idea happens when you, when you have a machine code and you execute it by the hardware. That's exactly what we have here. So this is just a simple example. I'm assuming this ELU, it has three instruction, add, sub, subtraction, and, and or. And uh, this operation are done on, uh, it is done on, uh, on two uh, numbers, A and B. And what you can see here, if I put zero, 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 the hardware is gonna do the addition. You better say. This is exactly as the she could have program. It's almost the same idea. You have a code. Once it's this code, that's what you call machine code. Okay. For every instruction, there is a unique code, machine code. Once, once this code again is stored in memory, as I told you, and you will see it in the, in the memory. Okay. And then once you read this code, and then you put it to the hardware, the hardware is going to do this operation. Okay. Uh, who, who, who are making these codes? Who are making this number? As I told you before, uh, the manufacturer of the processor. So the people who manufacture the processor, I give you here, and that's what we call an instruction set. An instruction set. For, so for every processor, the company that manufactures the processor is going to give you what we call an instruction set. An instruction set means these are all the instructions this processor can, can execute. And, okay? And for example, here, uh, for example, uh, uh, you have a table like this one. So this is an instruction EBA. This is, this is a simple code. This instruction is going to add A plus B to the result in E, and this is the machine code. Okay. So why it is 18061? Because the people who made, who made it, who designed the processor, they designed the hardware so that when you put 1806, it's going to do this operation. Okay, so what's going to happen in assembly? What, uh, you are going to again. It's going to be too difficult to to write to write to write uh, to when you write your program, you write numbers. So it's going to be too difficult to show for us. So what happens uh, in assembly? You, what you are, I'm going to teach English words, English instructions like this one, and that's this that's what what, what we are going to write in the assembly program. So your your assembly program is going to have English words like what you did before in any programming language, okay? But, uh, uh, and then after that, you are gonna use a program, this program is called assembler. This assembler is gonna translate, it's gonna convert every instruction you wrote here to its corresponding machine code, okay? Uh, also, every instruction, uh, you should understand, uh, as I said last time, when you program, when you program using uh, assembly, you actually program using machine code. It's, uh, it's, so it's, I think it's okay to say assembly is the machine language. Yes, it is the machine language, okay? Uh, yes, I'm writing English words, but every instruction here is gonna be translated by one instruction hardware, okay? And this is completely different from high level programming language as I also explained last time. Okay, so for high level programming language, for example, like C language, okay, uh, this is high level. So what do you mean by high, high level? It means it's very far from the hardware, okay? So in order to program using C language, you don't need to know the details of the hardware. You don't know, you don't need to know uh, uh, how big is your memory. You don't need to know the addresses. You don't need to know the registers. You don't need to, you don't need to know the hardware at all because it's very far, okay? Uh, so what happens here, uh, after you write your program in high level programming language like C, for example, uh, we have to use a compiler. This compiler should translate this one to, uh, to assembly language. And then from assembly to machine code, we can use assembler, okay? 
Again, this is very easy. This is just nothing, very easy, because what happens here, even you can you do it by yourself. What happens, you are gonna remove this instruction and then you are gonna write the corresponding to code. For example, if the corresponding code is, and then you are, you are gonna store it. Uh, for example, if this one needs four bytes, so I'm gonna store it in four location. And then I'm gonna remove this one. I'm gonna see what is the corresponding to code. If it's two bytes, so it's gonna take two locations and so on. So every every instruction here is going to have one one instruction here in the machine code, but this is not the case here. This is not the case here. So every instruction here it doesn't mean it's going to be one instruction at all at all because this is think about it's high level, right? So actually, what happens one instruction here you write in high level programming language may need 10, 20, 30 instructions in machine code, right? That's why and that is the reason machine code is detailed. Detail, you right? To do to do everything, you have to write a lot of code. Yes, that's true. That's true. Okay. Uh, and uh, as I told you last time, uh, again, I hope I repeated several times. I hope you understand very well uh, how assembly is different from any language you taught, you learned it before. I hope you understand. Assembler is a very simple program. It almost does not do anything. Very simple. However, compiler is very, uh, it has to be, uh, it, it, it has to be smart somehow, it has to be intelligent, because it, I see the assembler is just you replace, or you, you replace every instruction, with, so it's easy. But this one has a logic, has a logic, okay? If you wanna do something in, in high level programming language, so the compiler, the compiler has to figure out what bunch of codes I have to use in, in the assembly to do it, right? And usually the people are complaining that compilers usually are not uh, are not efficient, are not efficient. That, as I said before, that means if I want to do a certain task using C language, maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, a large number of code. But if I want if I program it using a simpler, maybe maybe much uh, maybe the number of lines is uh, much less. Okay. Um, Yeah, so this term of selection usually is not optimal. Okay. Uh, here, I just add, so as you will see, this was guys, if you want to write a program, if you write a program using C language, you don't need too much code. So you don't need many instructions. But, but if you compare it to assembly, in assembly, you have to, you have to write uh, much more uh, the instructions. Okay. Uh, that's true. However, I just want to tell you here in this course, we're gonna, you, are, you should learn the post how can you program microcontroller using assembly and C. And just here, I just want to tell you why, why still assembly is important, why we don't only focus on C and just ignore assembly. Actually, because let's see what, what is written here. Number one, assembly is not just another language. Very important. Okay, it's not, it's not only, it's not just a new language. It should help you to understand how does the process work because this is the reality. That's what we done by the hardy. So, so uh, assembly learning assembly is not uh, it's not it's not like you are gonna learn a new new only a new language. No, by learning assembly you can you can understand how the hardware works. Okay, as I, also as I told you last time. Uh, uh, here, if you if you wanna do like if you have. If performance is very critical, so in this case, usually we write it in assembly. So in some applications, we need we need response, we need application like any latency. We need applications that response a program that can that responds very fast. In this case, like for example, if you a aircraft controller or something like that, uh, in C, the, such kind of programs, still people are using as assembly to program them, okay? Because assembly programs, uh, usually they can be faster, okay? Anyway, also we we still, we are using assembly. Um, here also, uh, I'm telling you some instructions, you may not find them in C language and you, you need to do it in, in, in assembly. Uh, by the way, as you will see later in this course, your program can have both. So assembly, so you, you can write inside the C language, there is an instruction to also write uh, some assembly instructions, okay? Uh, also, uh, some 
uh, put inputs or drivers for some devices or as compilers or as this all of these things are written uh, in, in assembly okay uh, not only that also uh, understanding assembly will help you to better understand high level programming language because there are many things we do in, in high level programming language but no one no one tells you why we did this way okay we actually did this way because assembly needs that because the hardware needs that but this was not explained to you for sure or there was no need to explain it in case of high level group. anyway so i don't want to elaborate here so in this course i'm going to teach you both assembly and uh, but i just want to tell you why assembly is uh, important um also let me see here uh also i told you any uh here inside the processor there are what we call here uh, uh arithmetic logic unit i already explained this one now also we have control unit and also we have registers so now i want to talk about registers so so every processor again everything i'm explaining here hardware set Okay, so, uh, uh, and you would see in the coming lab, you would see the registers. So number one, what do you mean by register and why we need them? We're gonna use them all the time, okay? So, uh, yeah, so here, just a, a register is a storage area inside the CPU, okay? So it's a storage. That means one register, for example, can store uh, a bias, one register can store uh, 32 bits. So it's a storage unit, okay? Uh, so actually the structure of register is somehow different from memory, very, very different from memory, okay? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, memory, memory is a storage unit. Yeah, that's true processor inside the processor we have another storage unit we call them registers we have a number of registers that's okay so this is this register a storage unit and memory also a storage unit but there is a big difference between them okay what is what do you mean by the what do you mean by big difference i'm gonna tell you number one to read or write registers much 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 faster than reading or writing from memory this is number one so if you want, if you read or write registers, it's much faster than reading or writing to a memory location. Okay. Uh, number two, we don't have to, we have we have many locations here in the memory, but we don't have we don't have many registers in the processor. Every processor has every processor has just very few number of registers. Okay. Number three. Unlike memory, I'm using memory to store data and to store instructions in memory. Registers are used to the register should help the processor to execute instructions. I told you, processors don't only really one thing: execute instructions. That's it. Okay. To execute instructions, I need storage units, right? To help the processor to execute instructions. Okay. So. Uh, so here, that's why we have here a number of registers. Okay. Uh, so let me let me tell you uh, summarize what I said. What I said, guys. Inside the processor, we have storage units. We call them registers. I told you they are not many. They are not many. Maybe 10, uh, 12, no more than that. Okay. Maybe less. In some processor it's less, but anyway, they are not many. Uh, big difference between between this register. Yes. Uh, registers and memory are both of them are storing the stored data, but there's big difference between them. Okay, number one, uh, registers are much faster, much faster than uh, than memory. Is that okay? So that's why later I'm gonna tell you later in your program if you have a variable, okay, if you have a variable and you if you have the option either use a register. For this variable for example i have a variable x okay so variable x here if i have the choice between using a register 
to store uh, the variable X or using a memory location. If you have the choice, so in this case, it's going to be good for your program to choose uh, to choose the register meta memory location because it's going to be faster. Every time you want to read it, to write code, it's going to be faster if you have the choice. Okay. But anyway, but also you should understand the purpose. The purpose of uh, of these registers is to help the processor to uh, to execute instructions. Okay. So let me. I'm going to maybe I need to elaborate a little bit here. Just I want you to understand exactly what I want to say. Um, I have a good example here. So, for example, if I want to write a program to do something like that. For uh, just any numbers, for example, in the memory location number C, I want to add, I want to add the content of, for example, we have three EU. I want to add the content of memory location C, uh, 700, okay, uh, to 800, whatever, whatever here, to F or whatever, and then I want to store the result in 900. Is that okay? So I want to add, I want to add this location, uh, the content or uh, of this memory location. Plus this one, and then I want to store the result in this one. If I want to write a program, simple program to do that, okay? So I have two numbers, two variables, and two memory locations. I want to edit and store the result in, in, in 900. But as I told you before, who, who should do it? Who? Arithmetic logic unit, ALU. However, so ALU should do it, right? In, any arithmetic operation should be done by the ALU. However, as you will see in this course, ALU. Does not work directly. It's not connected because because now everything is hardware, as I told you before. So the LU is not directed directly connected to memory. You, you get what I'm saying? So I cannot say I can, so, so I cannot. Uh, so this memory location, this one is not directly connected to the LU. Okay. So what happens is that LU is connected to registers internal internal inside the microprocessor. Is that okay? To registers. And the result also has to go to a register. So what happens, to guys? If I want to do this addition operation, number one, I have I have to read I have to read this location. I have to store it in one register. So I have to store here three A. This is using load instruction. I'm gonna talk about this one. Okay. Again, because the LU is only connected to register, so I have to read this one. I have to store it somewhere in a register. Is that okay? Number two. I have to do again, I have to read this one again, I have to put it here, to F, here. So I have to use another load instruction, is that okay? And then, and then I'm gonna ask the LU to do addition. Then the LU is gonna do addition and then it's gonna store the result here in a register. And then I have to, I have to write the result here using a store instruction, okay? So anyway, what I wanna say here is, uh, registers are, uh, storage units inside the microprocessor okay you should understand how how they are different from memory they, uh, they, they, they are not used to store programs or store data they, are, they just should help the processor to execute an instruction if i want it similar to similar to this instruction imagine this is instruction for example when you say y equal x plus w for example if you do something like that in c language x y uh, X, Y, and W are memory location. Okay, that's exactly what. So in this case, you have to you have to read X. You have to store it somewhere. So what you mean by somewhere? I register. Okay. Uh, one 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 more difference uh, between registers. Uh, as I told you, we don't have many registers. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you details. And registers are very fast, much faster than uh, memory. Okay. Uh, one more difference is. Uh, unlike memory, for when I access locations in memory, I have to use addresses, numbers. Okay, but for registers, I don't use addresses. I don't use numbers. I use uh, I use uh, 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 names. So for register, I'm going to use the names of the register. Is that okay? Instead of using numbers. So in memory, I, I use numbers, but in uh, in register, we use the names of the register as we'll see. Okay. Um, The last thing I want to explain, let me see if I missed some. So 
Yeah, I think I always separate everything I about the chest. So when I come, everything here until from section one up to section five is general. But when I come to section six, I will, I will focus on our processor, ARM processor. Okay. So for this processor, I'm going to tell you exactly what, what registers we have. So I'm going to give you the details. And in, in the assembly instruction, we're going to use these registers all the time. Okay. Uh, but here I'm teaching just a concept. So now let's let's come to the last uh, the last thing we have here, what we call a control unit. Okay. So what what what's a control unit? The last part here in any processor is a control unit. Okay. So this control unit, this is like the brain of the processor. Okay. What happens here is that. Um, So let, let me give you just an example to understand what is a control unit and what the control unit is, is doing. Okay. So I told you, I give you, I told you here, guys, um, inside the microprocessor, this is the microprocessor, we have a number of registers. Yes, we have a number of registers. That's true. Also, we have here arithmetic logic unit. That's true. This arithmetic, arithmetic logic unit. Uh, should do any arithmetic or logic operation. Also, we have the control unit as, uh, as I told you, okay? And this control unit is connected to every device here. So it's connected to every device, can control, can control every, every component is controlling them, okay? Also, we have buses here. So we have some, we have buses here, internal buses. Don't be confused. We have, we have buses to connect the main processor to input output device and memory, this is outside buses, but also internally inside the processor itself we have buses. Okay, so that we have buses so that I can easily I can transfer data from one register to LU or I can transfer from the LU to one register and so on. Okay, so let me explain this one. Okay, so for example, this register R0 and this register R1. Okay, for example. If there is an instruction, I want to R0 should equal R0 plus R1. Okay. And this, this one has a has a, a register here and the register here. Okay. If this is the instruction, and assuming also uh, the code, machine code for this one, for example, is 3AF2, just any number. Okay. So here in the memory, we have 3AF2. This is the instruction. So what happens is, as I told you, uh, microprocessor has to read the instruction by instruction from the machine code, right? And then after you get the machine code, you are going to execute it by the hardware. Okay. So what happens is that, for example, if I read if I read this one three AF two, okay, so I'm going to read it, okay, and then I have to store it somewhere. Yes, I'm going to store it in a, in a special register. We call it instruction register. So there is a special register. It's called IR, instruction register. So after I read, after I read the machine code, after I read the machine code from memory for the current instruction, okay? So I have to store the machine code somewhere. Yes, we store it in a register. We call it IR. So after I read this code from here, we call it 3A, uh, 3F2. So I'm going to put it here. And this one is connected to the control unit. Is that okay? By the way, as I'm going to explain shortly, to execute every instruction, every instruction has to go through two phases. Two phases. Phase number one, we call it fetch. Fetch means I have to read the machine code, I have to store it in IR. This is the first phase. Phase number two, execution, execute. That's it. Once I am done with this instruction, I'm going to go to memory again to get the next instruction, fetch again, execute, fetch, execute. Fetch. 
ايه ده ساوند تيست اون ذا تايم فيتش انستراكشن اكسكيوت فيتش ليكس انستراكشن اكسكيوت اوكي سو ذير ار تو فيزز ذا فيرست فيز اي هاف تو ريد ات فروم ميموري وكوليكت فيتش اند ذن افتر ذات اكسكيوت سو افتر افتر يو ريد ذس وان سو وانس يو بوت ات ستور ات ان هارد وير ريجستر وي كول ات هاي ار انستراكشن ريجستر اند ذس اي ار از كونكتد تو ذا كنترول يونت اوكي لوك يو جايز The control unit is a hardware circuit. Hardware circuit is the, it is designed is it is designed so that when I apply this number three A is a machine code three A F two, okay. When this number I put it to the control unit, the control unit is gonna issue is gonna generate signals because I told you the control unit is controlling everybody. Okay, so then uh, it's going to generate a sequence, a, a set, a set of uh, structure, a set of signals, so that after we execute all these signals, the instruction is executed. Okay, for example, I'm just giving you a simple example. For example, once you put this one, the hardware, the hardware number one or number one C, uh, CU is going to is going to give a comment to. Uh, Uh, RO is gonna tell uh, R0, uh, register zero. It's gonna tell register zero, please send, put your value on the bus. Then it's gonna tell the, this one, please take it. So now I took the first value R0, I store it here in the, in the register of the LU, right? Then, then the control unit is gonna send another, another signal, another signal to R1, please R1 put the value here. A new this register, temporary register, please take this one. Is that okay? Number three, the control unit is going to tell the LU, LU, because now LU, LU now has the two numbers here, okay? So it's going to tell the LU, LU, now you can do addition, right? So LU is going to do addition and then it's going to give the result here. After that, the control unit is going to generate a signal. It's gonna tell. It's gonna tell this register. Please, this register, put your value here. And then it's finally it's gonna tell R1, R1, take it from this bus. Okay, guys. So let me make it very simple. What I'm saying is that the control unit is a hardware circuit. It is designed so that when I get a machine code, I when you apply this machine code to the hardware. The control unit is going to generate a sequence of instructions because the control unit is connected to everybody. Uh, so that after we finish all these instructions, uh, this operation is going to be uh, it is done. And for sure, by changing the machine code, by changing the machine code, the instructions, the sequence of uh, signals are going to change because you are doing something different, right? Basically. Any question, guys? Okay. So let me ask you a question because one of the things here also you should learn. So at least for now, you know one register, we call it instruction register, IR. So instruction register, it's a register inside the processor. This register, after you read a machine code, it's gonna be, you have to store it somewhere. So store it inside this machine. Okay, so now based on what I explain, you, you feel like there is a sequence, right? There is timing, should be series of timing. Why is there some timing? Simply because, because I cannot, I cannot ask, because there is a sequence. I can't, for example, I cannot tell this register, what it's a value, and this register at the same time takes the value. I cannot say that. Okay, so I have to wait a little bit some time until, until I make sure this value is written so that I have to tell this one to take it. Otherwise, If I generate the two commands at the same time, maybe this one is going to capture the old value. You got what I'm saying? So you feel like there is a sequence. So now, okay, so how the hardware is going to manage? It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep the time, or, or it's going gonna, it's gonna to do step number one, step number two. You feel like there is a steps, right? You have to do this one, do this, this one, and this, this one. Yes. In order to help the hardware to do something like that, we, we, there is something we call, we call it clock. So I just want to teach what I mean by clock and why it is important, okay? So clock, clock is just a square wave. This is number one. So this is number one. Clock, clock is just a square wave. Yes. Any computer system 
should have a clock without clock it cannot work right so why why you need this clock again as i told you the idea is that um, yeah. the idea is that look here guys assume i want to do i i want to i want to do a certain instruction for example i want to write i want to write for example number 70 to a memory location to memory location 1000 for example so so i wanted i want to do this instruction okay as i told you what we do what we have to do is every instruction i have to break i have to break it down into steps so in order to do this operation I, for example, I have to do step number one. So every step you are gonna do like a very very smooth test, very smooth test. Step number two, step number three. As I, ju I just I have just explained right now. So number one, I have to tell are you uh, R0, sorry, uh, R0. Uh, you have to put your value here. This register, you have to take your value. Okay. So any instruction, we actually break it down into smooth tests, right? And every task we execute it in one block. You got what I'm saying? For example, if this instruction, in order to execute this instruction, I need three tasks. So the clock should help me to, to ensure the timing. Okay. So what happens here in the first clock, I execute step step number one or task number one, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Then in the second clock, I'm gonna do task two or step two. And then I'm gonna do task three. Okay, this instruction may need only three three tasks. So that means it needs three three clocks. Then I'm done with this instruction. Next instruction may be more complicated. Maybe it needs it needs more tasks and it needs more cycles. Yeah, maybe that's what I'm saying. Maybe it is faster and I can do it only in one cycle. Yes. Okay, guys. So let me summarize. Okay, just let me finish this one and I'm, I'm gonna take your question. So let me summarize what I said. What I said, guys, any computer system should have what we call a clock. Okay. So what is clock? Clock is just score wave. Okay. And this score wave is used by the hardware for timing and for executing the instructions. Is that okay? So you and by the way, <laughs> this clock, you should, you should we use it all the time, by the way, but we don't call it a clock. When you buy when you, when you buy a laptop and they tell you this laptop is one point or this computer is 1.2 gigahertz or uh, 2.4 gigahertz. What is this? What this frequency is? The clock. That is why the faster, the faster this, or the higher this number, the faster is your computer. Because the higher the frequency, the higher the frequency, the shorter is the time. This time is shorter, right? Because you know the relation. F should equal one over T. So the higher the frequency, that mean I can execute, if this instruction needs, needs a three cycle, I can execute it faster. You got what I'm saying? So any processor, any processor needs a clock, okay? And the higher the clock, the faster is the processor because it can execute it faster. You got what I'm saying? Yes, what's your question? Is the clock generator in the no, no. Is no. it like separate? Yes. Uh, it, it, usually they use uh, uh, crystal. There is something called uh, like an electronic circuit, right? That has a crystal. And this electronic circuit can generate very stable, very accurate screen wave. And you, the, uh, they input it to the, the whole system. Okay. Also, how is the clock generated? Is it like, is it like a background color that counts every white page or? Like electronic circuit. Yeah. So there is an oscillator or electronic circuit that generate it. You got what I'm saying? Uh, for example, here, uh, yeah. So for example, this microcontroller, we put here external external crystal because to generate very accurate screen wave, uh, there is uh, uh, some the best. There are different oscillators anyway, but the most accurate one when you use crystal. So you have to put a crystal here. And the remaining circuit inside the processor itself. You got them, sir. Any any other questions? Yeah. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, I know you said it's a square wave. Like, I'm just curious if there are specific reasons square wave was chosen out of any kind of like format, like a sensor or soft or anything like that. That's a very good question. Uh, actually, men in digital system, we love, not love, we, all the time we use, we use square waves, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. We, we don't use uh, uh, sine waves or any other waves. You got to say? So my answer is because this is a digital system. Always for any digital system, we don't, don't think about it. All the time we use, we use this, this screw waves. You got to say? Okay, guys, any questions? Okay, by the way, in digital, you talk, you talk digital system, systems course, right? Uh, you, you, I'm not sure if you designed a counter, there was a counter by the end of the course, and this counter needed a clock, right? So it's almost the same idea. So you had a clock, you had to use a clock in order to count, to make a count. It's almost the same idea. The clock also was a school wave, right? So no. any questions, guys? Anyway, uh, again, for the purpose of this course, we don't need the details, but at least you should understand, number one, what is the meaning of clock? When I tell you our processor, is a clock of this processor is 24 megahertz or for this 40 megahertz, whatever, what this means. That's number one. Number two, number two, you should understand every instruction, every instruction is going to take an, a certain number of uh, cycles. Okay, so the people who manufacture, the people who manufacture the processor, they have to tell us for every instruction how big is the machine code. How big is the machine code? That means uh, the machine code is gonna occupy how many bytes the memory, right? So you have to tell us. Also, they have to tell us uh, for to execute every instruction how many cycles you need. You need you need for the clock. You got what I'm saying? And if you know how many cycles, and if you know the speed speed of the clock, so you can easily calculate the execution time. You can know how much how much time is gonna take. For example, let me give you an and you will example here to understand what I'm saying. I told you guys, if the frequency of the clock is F, so the time, the time here, the period is one over F. I'm gonna call it T, is that okay? For example, just any numbers. If I tell you F is 24 megahertz, this is what we used here in this board, but I, and Arno, I can use a different number, I'm going to you about it, okay? But anyway, so, but just any numbers. <coughs> so that means it's one over 24 microsecond. Is that okay? This is one, one, this is one, one clock. Okay, if I have an instruction, oh, if I have one instruction, and I want to know how much time it's going to take to execute this instruction, all what you need to know, how many cycles are needed for this instruction, that's it. So if you have a, if you want to, if you have a certain instruction and you know this instruction needs three cycles, three cycles. So how much time you need to execute this this instruction? It's going to be three times t, or three three times one over twenty four microsecond. If you if you can know the execution time for one instruction, you can calculate the execution time of the whole program, right? Because the program is just a bunch of uh, I said to the Okay, guys. Any questions? You understand that? I don't need details. I just want you to understand the concept. When I see clock, you, you understand what I mean by clock. Uh, the frequency, the higher the frequency for clock, uh, what, what it means. Okay. Uh, also, how, how, how you, we may use it in this course. Uh, uh, or at least when you, when you, when you say, when you, uh, when you, for example, if you wanna if you wanna select a, a microcontroller and you can you and you have the choice, you can select the one that has a higher clock because the one that has a higher clock is gonna be faster. Um, but someone can tell me, okay, if, if the clock is so nice this way, why you don't make the clock too high? Why you cannot make it too high, right? Uh, we hope so, but. Uh, it's not it's not possible to make it too high because when you increase the clock you actually it's going to be a, a heat the processor is going to have heat that's why you know we have we have limitations here we have limitations that's also why i told you before about the resistors i told you resistors are very good and much faster than, than memory someone can ask me okay if this is the case so why we don't have too many resistors 
very simple because this register consumes uh, 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 the gener consume power and the generated uh, heat. You get what I'm saying? So if you have too many registers or you increase, so there are some limitations of the hardware regarding the, this clock. Okay, because you know, in a certain heat, the material is gonna melt, melt down. So there is, uh, so that's why we cannot increase it too much. So there are some limitations here. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Uh, I know you also, like you said, that heat generated as well as uh, power supply limits it. Does the clock structure that you mentioned also kind of have a bearing on the ability of the clock speed, how high the load is? So, it's a, it depends on that because you have a circuit, you have oscillator circuit, and this circuit has a crystal. Okay, so based on this circuit, uh, yeah, yeah, the circuit is designed so that it generates a certain frequency. Look at uh, Let's see what else we have here. Okay, so now. I, I already explained what's compiler, what is uh, assembler. Okay, here I just this is exactly what I said, but I I, I just want to tell you how can we execute the uh, programs. Okay, and there is I told you about one register. We, we have I'm going to explain the register in detail, screen, but for now at least we know, we know one register. I have the instruction register. Okay, this is after after we read. Is a machine code from memory, we have to store it as an instruction register. That's okay. There's another, another, another important register I'm going to explain right now. We call it PC, PC program counter. Program counter. Okay, guys. What is PC? I'm going to tell you what is PC. Look here, guys. As, as I told you before, for I just any numbers, I just want to teach the concept, the idea. Assume this is a location, for example, number 1000, okay, for example. And we have here one instruction. This is instruction number one, instruction number one. Instruction number one is gonna take three location, okay? This is not necessarily, this is the case for ARMO processor. I'm just teaching a concept. When I, when I come to the ARMO source, I'm gonna give you the details. But again, the instruction uh, it can take more than one location because in one location is gonna store one byte. Okay, so it depends on how big is an is a machine code. But anyway, assume an instruction one is going to take three locations. So this is 1000, 1001, 1002, and this is 1003. Is that okay? Assume the next instruction is going to take only two. Instruction two. Okay, and then next instruction is going to take, for example, four. Instruction uh, number three. So this one, three, four, and 1005. Is that okay, guys? Okay. So think about it. If I want to execute this program, how I execute it? Very simple. Number one, I have to read the machine code of instruction one, execute it. After I finish it, I have to go to memory, execute the, uh, uh, sorry, fetch, or I have to read instruction two, execute it. When I am done, I have to go to memory again, uh, read instruction three, execute it. Make sense, right? That's what I have to do. Okay, but there is a little problem here. The problem is how I can keep track. How I can keep track. How I can know which instruction right now I have to I have to read. Which one? How I how I can keep track. What I'm saying? Here comes what we call PC program counter. So program counter is a hard to adjuster inside the processor. You will see it by yourself. It's a coming lab. What happens, guys, if your program starts from location, so in the very beginning, if my program started from location, just 1,000, for example, so B, initially BC, I'm going to put 1,000 here. So, so that the PC is going to point at this one. Point here. So my processor is going to ask BC, BC, where are you? I am pointing. I am pointing, that's why BC is acting like a pointer, like a pointer, okay? I know, some student before told me, uh, we talk pointers in C language, but we didn't understand what it means until we, we took this course, we understood it better in this course, by the way. 
So we will use pointer for the fibers. It's going to be much easier to see that. Okay. So let's see. So in order to keep track, so now first PC, PC is pointing. So what do you mean by pointing? What pointing means? It means it is storing the address of a location. Point. That's why it's point. Is that okay? Then, as I told you, for every instruction, it has to go through two phases. Fetch, execute, fetch, execute. Is that okay? So now I want to fetch an instruction to execute. Which instruction? Where is the location of the instruction I have to fetch? PC is going to tell you. Okay? So PC is a special purpose uh, register. It should help the microphone to keep track of the instruction it has to execute, right? So I'm going to ask PC, where are you, PC? I am here, my friend. I am pointing at 1,000. So I'm going to fetch the instruction at 1,000. So I'm going to read this instruction. So here I'm going to fetch the machine code. After I fetch the machine code, I'm going to update PC. So that PC is going to point at 1,003. So number one. So now I'm going to update it so that PC is going to point on the next executed instruction. The instruction I'm going to execute next. So after I fetch, I'm going to update PC, right? Then after you fetch, you execute the instruction, this instruction, I1. OK, guys? Now I am done with I1, instruction number one. So I need to execute instruction number two. I'm going to repeat again. I'm going to repeat again. I'm going to tell. So now I'm going to tell PC, where are you, PC? I am at 1003. That OK? Then it's pointing here, pointing at 1003. Then I'm going to read the instruction at this location, right? So what's going to happen? I'm going to fetch. I'm going to make a fetch. It's starting from 1003. So I'm going to read 1003 and 1004. So I'm going to read this instruction. I'm going to fetch the instruction. I'm going to put it in IR, right? Again, before I execute this instruction, I'm going to update BC so that BC now is going to point at next one, 1005. Then I'm going to execute, after I execute this instruction, I'm going to keep doing it again. OK, guys? So we have a special uh, register. We call it BC. You will see by yourself in the coming lab. BC is storing. As an address. That's why I'm calling it a pointer. So, okay. So sometimes if you have a register, register like a variable or a variable or maybe a variable, right? A register is a variable. It's like a container. You can you can store whatever you want to change it. Variable, right? Variable. Okay. But it's a hardware inside the process. Anyway. So. So. Uh, so here, sometimes if you have a register, sometimes you, you store data. Right. Sometimes if I have a register, I store address like PC. That's why when you store address in a variable, this variable is called a pointer. Because this variable is not storing data, it is storing the address of the data. You got what I'm saying? Any questions? So PC is a special register. It should help the process to keep track. I need to keep track. I need to know after executing instruction one. So it's like a pointer. It's pointing here. Once I execute this one, it's gonna be here. So when I finish this instruction, I'm gonna ask the PC on here. Right. So is that okay, guys? Any questions? Yes. I just said it's gonna call the address, not the data. It's gonna call the, the pointer calls the address. Yes, a pointer is storing location of the data. So I'm gonna put when I read the instruction, I'm gonna go to this location, I'm gonna read the data stored to zero, I'm gonna put it on my IO. Is that clear now? I know it's a little bit confused. Yes, it is it's, it's not PC is not storing the instruction. Okay, it is storing the address of the instruction. That's why it's not a pointer. Pointer means it's a variable that stores address. Okay. And then I'm going to read the content of this address. Okay. And that's what you are going to see in the coming lab. So, the coming lab, you will see after you, in the originally, you will see what is the value of PC. I'm going to ask you to watch to watch BC. Initially, you will see PC. After you execute one instruction, you will see PC is updated to point to the next one and so on. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna tell you something quickly. Okay, but someone can tell me, but but this is not in, in programming. Look here what I want to say first. The way you the way you explain it right here, it's like in programming we execute an instruction and then an instruction and then an instruction and this and stuff. But this is not always the case. Sometimes we skip. Sometimes if I, if I have if statement, for example, I have to skip this part. So it's not in programming. It's not like I'm going to execute instruction and then next one, next one, next one. No, the, usually we change the flow. For example, if you have if statement, B, I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump. Okay. So how can you do something like that in PC? Is going to help us to do that, right? So I'm going to tell you very very quickly to understand how the hardware can do something when you jump. Jump. What do you mean by jump? Like if statement. If you have if statement. So if you have if statement here, guys. So that means after I execute this instruction, maybe I'm not gonna go to this instruction. I execute this one. If, if the condition is false, maybe I'm gonna come here, right? You need to jump. Okay, very simple. Look, look how it works. What happens is that again, this is a register PC. Okay, this one, for example, is storing 1000. So one 1000 is stored here, for example. Okay. Assume, assume here at 1000. So number one, again, again, number one. So this is 1,000, one, two, three. Okay. Again, uh, I have to fetch, I have to fetch this uh, instruction. I have to fetch the instruction here. I have to update BC so that it becomes 1,003. That's true. Yes, I have to do that. So now BC is here. But if this instruction wanna jump, if this instruction is an instruction for jump, for example, I want to jump to the location 7,000. So here, so this instruction is jump to 7,000. So that means after I execute this one, I should not come here. After I execute this one, I have to go to 7,000. The one that at the location 7,000. You got it? Because it's a jump, I want to jump, okay? So what happens is that again, after I fetch, BC is, is pointed here after fetch. But, when you execute the instruction, the instruction itself is gonna update BC, it's gonna change the BC. So it's gonna remove this one, it's gonna write 7,000 in BC. So that after I execute this instruction, I'm gonna tell you BC, where are you BC? So BC was here, right? But when I execute the instruction, BC is gonna move BC, it's gonna move BC to here. So when I fetch the next one, I'm gonna fetch this one, not, not the next one. That's what I'm saying. So that's how, how we're done by Zahar. Okay, guys. That's also, by the way, as you would see in the assembly, I'm gonna teach assembly codes, for example. If I say, for example, jump, jump, for example, next. Assuming this is an instruction and this is a label. Label is where you wanna jump, label. Okay, label. So this is an instruction, for example, jump, okay? And then I put here a label. A label is just, you need to name, you need a name to line, so, so where do you wanna go? So yeah, it can be any name doesn't need to be next, can be any name, okay? Any name, whatever you want to, any uh, one, any name, okay? So just any English name, okay? So here, so that I want to jump to. So what happens when you do something like that, as I'm going to explain when I teach assembly, I'm going to tell you all labels here, these labels, N1 or whatever labels we are using, are going to be replaced by the addresses. So that a similar, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about addresses. What's gonna happen is that I'm gonna write English words this way. But what, what's gonna happen is assembler when when this program is converted to machine code, one one of the things the assembler is gonna see is gonna see where is this instruction. For example, this instruction is at the location 8000. So N1 is gonna be replaced by 8000. You got what I'm saying? So this is something that's gonna be done. So any label, any label I'm gonna use in assembly. I just wanna link what I said here by, by this example, uh, but in, in, as I'm gonna teach in, uh, as I'm gonna teach in, when I teach assembly, the label you are, you are using is gonna be replaced by the assembly. Okay, not, you don't need to worry, just use English short words. But the assembly is gonna, it's gonna see where this line is stored in memory, 8,000, 9,000, whatever it is, and then it's gonna replace it by, by here. That's why this number, it's 
Any question, guys? When I can use the pointers again, listen, listen to me. I hope you can understand the concept of pointer right now from BC because uh, if you don't understand why right now, we're gonna use it later. Okay, how, how we're gonna use it later when we make array. Array. If you have an array, array of numbers, for example, 3a, f2, uh, whatever, uh, 0, 0, uh, 2b, whatever, okay? So this is array of bytes, for example, okay, guys? So again, in order to read the array, I'm gonna use the idea of, uh, of pointer again, but using a normal, using a register, I'm not gonna use PC for sure, because PC is a special purpose, is a special purpose pointer, special purpose, okay? It's only used for this one. So I'm gonna get some register, for example, if this one at location 1000, this one 1001, 1002, 1003. So here I'm gonna put here 1000. So this is gonna a pointer here. Then I'm gonna read the first element in the array. Then I'm gonna increment this one. So this one is gonna point to here. Then I'm gonna read the second element in the array. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna increment this one so that it points here. So you are storing the address. Uh, it's, it's also only a point of store the address and register. Read, read the value pointed. Read the value pointed by this register, right? Uh, then increment it so that you can read the next element and so on. Is that okay? Not only that, there is also something I'm going to explain later. We call it a stack pointer. You can tell from the name stack pointer. This is also a special. This is a special purpose pointer. This pointer is used to for stack. For sure, I'm gonna explain later what I mean by stack and why we need stack. So this is stack, there should be a pointer pointing at the stack. You got what I'm saying? So I, now, so I give you, I hope you understand what I mean by pointer for PC, right? So PC is a special purpose. We're gonna use pointer again uh, in stack. So pointer simply, simply pointer means it is a variable that is storing address for a date. Not the date, address. And then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this pointer to know which location I have to read to get the date. Which location I have to read to get the date. But it's a register itself, it does not store the date, but the location is it, okay? So I'm gonna, already we're gonna use it in PC. Later we're gonna use stack pointer. Also we're gonna use, during the course, we're gonna use here a regular register as a pointer to, uh, to, to, to read or write arrays for arrays, okay? Uh, so maybe I just want to finish. I'm not going to explain many more, uh, many slides. Maybe I'm going to stop here so that next time I'm going to, I'm going to start, but let me finish here. I, I almost explained everything I want to explain here. I just, so here, this is the idea. How can we execute programs? So number one, number one guys, uh, as we will do in the first step, you have you have to write your program in assembly language, as you see here, English words. So I can use English words to write your program, right? And then uh, the assembler, everyone here is gonna be stored in 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 uh, by the machine code. And I'm gonna ask you to go. Uh, you will see you will see the machine code for every instruction. So the program you will see this instruction. This is the code. This is the code. And if you go to the memory, you will see we, you will see they stored in the memory this way. Is that okay? So now your program is stored in memory this way. This is your program. As I told you in the very beginning, we I have we have to initiate not you. This is a similar we do it when you run my when you run your program, right? So PC is gonna store here as if you start from location zero. So here you are gonna put zero here. So PC is gonna point at this location. After that, you have to read, you have to do fetch, you have to fetch. So I have to read the instruction. I have to read the instruction pointed by PC. I have to store it in IR, as I explained, right? I have to store it in IR. Uh, after that, you have to update PC. You, are, you have to update PC so that it's gonna point at the next instruction. That's why always PC is pointed, point, pointing at the next executed instruction. Because after I fetch, after I fetch the instruction, before I execute it, after I fetch, I increment this. Okay? So, and then I execute this instruction. I told you how, how I execute the instruction. Once I store it in IR, 
ار اي از كونكتد تو ذا كنترول يونت ذا كنترول يونت از جينا ويز ذا هيلب اوف كلوك فور شور ذا هارد وير ذا هارد وير نيد ا كلوك ذا هارد وير نيد ا كلوك اولسو ان اديشن تو ذا كلوك ذيس نمبر وين يو بوت ات اون ذا هارد وير ذيس وان از جينا جينيريت سيجنالز اند كنترول يونت از كونكتد اولموست تو افري افري وان ان سايد كنترول يونت اولسو اونلي كان كنترول ان سايد ذا بروسيس Yeah, so once you finish this one, you have to move, you have to move the next one and so on. So, so here um, is similar to what I explained. So after you see, so for example, this instruction here, for example, this instruction here is gonna take three locations. So this one is stored in three location. So I have to read these three locations. So that's what I'm, yeah. So for example, this is a machine code for this one. Okay, so I have to read these three locations, and then after I'm done with this one, I have to go to next one. The next one is gonna uh, I'm gonna read three, for example, three locations, whatever. How big is the instruction? So I have to read the instruction, and every time I have to increment the PC. For example, if this instruction is gonna take three locations, I'm gonna take them, execute it, update PC. Uh, okay, guys. So any questions? I hope you you have, you have some idea about. Uh, So I'll just to finish this section. Uh, <clears throat> again, the purpose of this shutter itself can be a complete course in the way. So it's a computer application, it's a complete course. But I want to teach the, the information, minimum information we, we need in order to understand a simple. So what I did here today, I hopefully understand register. What, 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 what is register? What, what do you mean by register? How, how they are used? Okay. There is two things, that's it, but they are inside the process. How they are different from memory, right? From memory. Uh, also, you should understand, uh, I explained PC, I explained IR. Uh, also, you should understand, and that's what you are going to see in the first slide. You will see your program, you are going to write English words, okay? Similar to what you did in C language, in C language, or Java, or whatever, in Java, C language. We write instruction in English words, right? Uh, and then, uh, and then it's going to be translated to machine code stored in memory. You are going to see memory. You are going to see as a machine code for each instruction. Okay? You are going to see. Uh, uh, you are going to see the bytes. You can, be, you can see the bytes of the memory. You can see how they are stored in the memory. As I told you, in memory, you store in every location. You store only one byte. That's why one instruction is going to be stored in more than one byte. Right? Also, PC. In the coming lab, you should see PC. Right? Should understand IR such and just also hopefully you get some idea uh, about how 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 my processor is executing the instructions. Okay, you read the machine code, right? You put it in IR. Once you put it in the IR control unit, it's going to generate signal. It's connected to every everyone, so that this instruction is going to be executed by the hard way because it's the same, right? Once we finish, so we are going to fetch. We are going to fetch another instruction. Execute it. Fetch. Execute it. And PC should help me to keep keep track. Okay, so starting from the next section here, I'm gonna focus more on uh, on our uh, and everything here was general for any processor, but I'm gonna focus more on our ARM processor. Okay, okay, thanks guys. That's enough for today.